<laughs> believe it or not, believe it or not, this is actually pretty comfortable. Oh. I'm in a planted pine thicket on the edge of a very, very urban area. And I'm at a retention pond right here behind me. See that? You hear all the traffic and stuff on a big highway right there. But what's cool is that even though we're in on the, you know, the, sort of the fringes of this really urban area, not even the fringes, we're in the middle of it. It's just, this is a pocket of, of woods, this planted pines here. There's still wildlife activity like this. This is all beaver. These are all beaver sign right here. Bunches of them. See all those stumps? That's all beavers that are probably down here in this retention pond. Come up here and chewing these pines, pines down and dragging them down there for their dam and, and to eat, which is kind of neat. But anyway, if I was, if I was traveling through an urban area, this would be a really, really good location in, let's say, a grid down type situation where people were unfriendly and unwelcoming and I was wanting to stay under, under the radar. This would be a very, very good location to kind of hang out because no one's down here. There's some game trails, but there's no people trails. This is definitely off the beaten path for sure. I could potentially sit, lie and wait and ambush a deer that comes along one of these game trails. That's probably what this is, if I had to guess. I haven't seen any deer scat, but that's probably what's going on here. Yeah, there's some, looks like some old deer scat right there. So yeah, so even right here, as, as urban as this is, there's a pocket of, of wild. And this is where I would feel the most comfortable for sure, trying to sleep out as opposed to on some, you know, park bench somewhere where you'd be easy prey for anyone that wants to take what you've got. So um, if I was moving through this area and I was prepared, you know, I had all the gear and equipment that I needed, this would be a great place to camp out. Even if I didn't have all the gear and equipment that I needed and I needed a place to lie, lie low for a day or two or whatever, this wouldn't be a bad spot. And let's say I was on the move. Everybody wants to build these big shelters and stuff and they're cool and those are entertaining videos to watch and stuff, but they, they just take so long. I mean, to build any kind of lean-to type shelter, you're looking at hours and hours and hours. And let's say I'm on the move. Let's say I wanna get from point A to point B. I'm just trying to get there as quick as I can. I don't have the gear that I want. I'd like to have tents and tarps and all that stuff, but maybe I don't have it. Maybe I'm just completely unprepared. Maybe everything was stolen. Maybe an explosion happened and I had to flee the area. Who knows why something like that would happen and why you'd be unprepared, but that's why, that's how survival scenarios happen. You, you're stuff, ha life happens and you get caught up in the situation and you just got to deal with it as it comes. So what would I do if I was in this area right here I would build myself a debris bed out of all these really awesome pine needles like this. And I would probably, if it's dry enough, I'd probably just use the dead ones that are on the ground and rake them up. And I would literally just bury myself, because it's winter time, I'd just bury myself in the pine straw to insulate myself from the cold. Um, it's the simplest, easiest way to stay warm and survive a night because in the situation like we're kind of presenting here, I wouldn't want to have a fire. I mean, you could probably get away with a fire in here because it's so thick, nobody would notice it, but it would still be risky in that situation if you are trying to avoid people and there are problems. So who knows? I mean, maybe I want to, maybe I want to lie low. I can't have a fire. I want to avoid people as much as I can. I'm just trying to get from point A to point B as quickly as possible. And I'm limited on resources, limited on supplies. I just need to not freeze to death while I get a couple hours of sleep. Probably a smart idea to do this during the daytime and try to move at night in that situation. So I'm on a reasonably flat spot right here. And this is probably where I'd want to set up my shelter for the evening. I wouldn't want to be down there on the bottom because that's where it's going to be colder. Temperatures are going to be well below freezing tonight. And if I wanted to stay warm, I would definitely not want to be down there in that cold air sump. But right here with all of these pine boughs, all this pine straw, this is a good spot. Yeah, 
that. So you can see here, the stuff on top is reasonably dry, right? But as soon as you get down a couple layers, it turns into this wet, nasty stuff. And I try not to use that as much as I can. So just raking the top stuff would be ideal. You should always leave the house dressed appropriately. It doesn't matter what you're doing, where you're going. You should be dressed as if you have to spend the night outside. <laughs> Obviously, I won't be very warm if I spent the night out like this, but I won't die. If you walk outside in a t-shirt and flip-flops and shorts in the wintertime thinking, I'm in my heated car, I'm going to a heated building, there's no need for any of that. That's not very smart because you just never, ever know what's going to happen. What I would like to do is I'd like to make myself some sort of framed bed, a raised bed, but let's say I'm in a hurry. Let's say it's, you know, I just don't have time for that. I'm, I've got a, I'm exhausted. I've been walking all day long. Maybe I'm a little bit injured. I don't have time for all the bushcrafty fun stuff even though it would make me a lot more comfortable and let me sleep a little bit better and keep me warmer. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a giant big pile of this pine straw, and then I'm gonna bury myself in it essentially. And that's gonna create dead air space around my body. It's just like adding a big poofy jacket to your clothing. Once I've got myself a decent pile, I'd want to put a lot of that on the ground so I could lay on it and have myself a mattress that's going to keep me insulated from the cold ground. Um, and then I would cover myself with the rest. So I just make this giant big pile, push some of it on the ground. I'd like to sleep on hillsides like this. A little bit of a slope right there to elevate my head a little and helps me keep a look around as well. I can't, um, if you're laying flat on your back, you don't have as good of a visibility, a good of field of view as if you were sitting up just a little bit. So I like to sit up kind of like this on this hillside here with my butt on the flat part, on the flat. And then I would just take all this pine straw and I would cover myself up like this with the majority of it being kind of on my core my upper body, like that. And I would just nestle myself underneath this great big poofy pile of pine straw. Obviously you're not gonna get a great amount of sleep in a situation like this, but it's a whole lot better than nothing. If I've been walking for 20 miles, man, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be looking for a place to bed down for a few minutes. So getting under a huge pile of pine straw like this, is already, I can feel how it's trapping my body heat. I can already feel it. If I was doing this during the daytime, which would be really smart, a nice sunny patch, although a little bit higher visibility, a nice sunny patch, man, it's amazing being able to get a little bit of, little bit of warmth from the sun in the wintertime and try to get a little bit of sleep. So traveling at night, if possible, although traveling at night through areas like this is a little risky. Safety glasses is a smart idea. <laughs> Getting sticks in the eye is definitely a possibility if you're traveling at night without a flashlight. But yeah, I can, I can, I already feel so much cozier. And this pine straw is not ideal. It's a little bit damp. It's a little bit damp, but I can feel my hands when I stick them in there. My hands were getting warm again. They're kind of cold and numb. But I stick my hands underneath all this pine straw, and I can. It's like putting your hands in your pockets. That's what it feels like. So it's, it's not a bad way to go. Yeah, it's a little dirty, a little messy. But if you can tolerate that. Oh yeah, it's like having this big poofy layer of, of insulation on top of you, like a big down blanket. Maybe not quite that good, but you get what I'm saying. And all this took was maybe 10 minutes at most, and this is my shelter. Yeah, if there's any precipitation and stuff, snow maybe I wouldn't worry so much about, unless it was near that freezing point and it might melt and like drip in on top of me, that would suck. But. Um, any kind of rain, that, that would be a drag because you'd still get wet. This would still be better than nothing if you had no shelter whatsoever. But urban areas, if you're in that 
you know, this post-apocalyptic kind of scene that we're talking about, avoiding buildings is probably going to be your smartest choice because that's where people are going to be. Areas of interest. And I don't want to be in one of those areas of interest, so I would just be covering myself up with my pine straw and getting some Z's. This is actually, this is actually super comfy. <laughs> believe it or not, believe it or not, this is actually pretty comfortable. Oh. For sure fall asleep right here. Oh, another thing, another reason why I like to keep something like this in my back pocket, I usually keep a neck gaiter or a handkerchief, a, a um, bandana like this one. This is a wazoo foraging bandana. It's one of the ones that allows you to identify some of the most common plants around the world. I would tie this around my neck, you know, like a bandito. Tie it around my neck and then I would pull it up over my face. Just a thin layer of cloth around your neck is amazing. Pull it up over your face to help warm some of the air that you're, breath that you're breathing in. It, it makes a huge difference. In the summertime, keeps bugs off your face, but in the winter, it's great to keep your nose and lips and stuff from, from getting chapped and all that stuff. You can't have too much insulation. You could gather a giant pile of this stuff. I mean, just a huge monstrosity of a pile. The more time you want to spend on it, the better. If you've got the time, you've got the energy to do it. Mr. James Gibson, one of my uh, one of the guys that I really respect and I've learned a lot from, he says, if you build your shelter, your debris shelter thick enough like this, if you had the big enough pile, the rain would just get wore out trying to get to you. <laughs> so it'd have to rain for a long time, a lot of rain before you'd ever get wet. So the thicker, the better, obviously. But something even as little as this, as minimal as this, is, is gonna be sufficient enough to keep you warm. It's like having a really poofy outer layer on. Pretty nice, actually. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Hit the thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't done so already. Leave lots of comments, ask me lots of questions. Tell me what you think about a situation like this. Would you ever, ever see a need to sleep in a shelter such as that? Can we even call that a shelter? <laughs> try it out sometime. I do encourage you to try these things out. Don't just watch the videos. Don't just, just, don't just watch these things for pure entertainment purposes. Go out and actually try that and feel what it's like to be in something like that and be like, ah, you know what? He's not crazy. It is warmer in there. <laughs> That's what I want. I want you guys to go actually outside and, and experiment and do some of this stuff for yourself. But anyway, I'll see you on the next video. I can't wait. Thanks so much. Thumbs up. I'm Jason Salyer with Survival Dispatch. As a Survival Dispatch insider, you'll be able to gain the knowledge, the skills, and equipment necessary to protect your family when it really, really matters. They'll provide crucial information on such things as stockpiling food, medical necessities, communication plans. You will receive specific actionable plans. You can deliver proven techniques to help you get home, shelter in place, or bug out safe.